What is mental health? What is the picture of perfect mental health? These are questions that may seem simple, yet can be a puzzle. Even Pinterest has not revealed the image. So how should we paint that picture? The World Health Organization reports that health involves physical, mental, and social well-being and it is not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. So it is with mental health as well. It is not just the absence of problems. It does not require constant bliss, and it's not all or none. Many things in life are on a continuum. Temperature ranges from hot to cold, age from young to old, and social style from shy to bold. Physical and mental health are also that way, but there is no health without mental health. So let's get this right. There are many things that impact our mental health, but influencing it is different than defining. For instance, getting a good night's sleep can impact our mental health, as can the lack of sleep. But neither defines mental health, it only affects it. It is valuable in understanding mental health to recognize impacting factors. Examples include exercise, rest, nutrition, hydration, social support, attitudes, and even humor. Biblical wisdom notes that a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. Research shows that individuals who view their faith as an important part of their daily life and attend weekly religious services have a higher level of well-being. They also experience less of the daily negative emotions of worry, stress, sadness, and anger. Wouldn't it be wonderful if every church could be a center for health, healing, and wholeness, where positive mental health is promoted and enhanced. Individuals who are open to God's Spirit are best equipped to display the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. These are definitely traits that add to good mental health. Returning to the picture of mental health, it is about a stable psychological sense of well-being. It can be measured and maintained through three broad brush strokes. They are as follows. Number one, responsible engagement. This is the connection to our daily lives. We can choose how we act as well as selecting the most meaningful activities to fill our lives. Using the time in our lives productively matters. Number two, self-regulation. This relates to keeping our brains healthy and learning to control our mental functioning. We want the ability to focus our attention, think clearly, remember important things, make good decisions, take appropriate actions, think good and noble thoughts, and choose our attitude to manage our moods. What happens in our gray matter matters. Number three, adaptive coping. This is the ability to deal with adversity, stress, and problems. There are a lot of skills and strategies that can be developed and mastered in this arena that make a significant difference in the quality of life. We can't control the world but we can control how we respond to the world. It turns out this matters a lot for mental health. So, good mental health involves living a meaningful and productive daily life by choice, keeping our brains engaged and healthy, and finding ways of coping with stress and problems. Positive thoughts, habits, and emotions can then add rich color to one's life. Manage and nurture these areas and you will experience good mental health. If you struggle with any of these areas, it could be helpful to talk to your pastor, a physician, or a counselor to find ways to enhance your life and mental health. Dear friend, 
I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you even as your soul is getting along well.